It is great to be here, and thanks, traders, for uh, showing up. So I'm Dean Jenkins, founder of FollowMeTrades.com, and I'm going to be talking today about the benefits and the risks of trading with options. And I, I love trading with options. Uh, there's just so much, so so many cool things you can do with them, and they give you some real power. But there's some risks, so I want to cover that. And please uh, feel free during the presentation to ask questions at any time. I'd be happy to take those. And if you are interested in the material, in downloading the material, my presentation, I'm going to post the link right now in the chat area. And you can download a PDF of this and, and check it out later. So there, there's the link. So let's just jump right into it. The benefits and the risks of uh, trading with options. I'm going to cover these six areas today. First, I'll just get into the basic concepts of options, about how they work. Then the real fun part, the incredible power of options and the profit potential that, you, that they provide. I'm going to cover the risks because there are risks. And I'm going to talk about how you can control risk. We'll look at an option chain. You know, For new people uh, who are just getting started with options, that can be a little intimidating, so we'll look at it. And then I'll talk about some, uh, some next steps uh, that you might want to take uh, regarding options. So first, uh, of course, a disclaimer. Um, I'm, provi I'm presenting this material for education and information purposes only. I'm not a financial advisor, and I don't know your circumstances, so I'm not recommending that you do anything in particular relative to options or trading, but I am uh, just giving you some education, some information. All right, so there's two basic types of options, the calls and their puts. And, you know, this might be stuff a lot of people know, but it's just good to re uh to a review. Um, so a call option, when you buy a call option, you have the right, but not the obligation. I've underlined that, and that's an important concept. You have the right, but not the obligation, to purchase a stock at a predetermined price, which is called the strike price, at any time before the option expires. When we get into the risk that not an obligation is really important. When you buy a put option, you have the right, but not the obligation, to sell a stock at a predetermined price called the strike price any time before the expiration date. So an option is a contract. And that's what we, they call them, option contracts. You buy contracts. It's between the contract writer and the contract buyer. The buyer has the right, but not the obligation, to exercise, to act on the contract, to buy or sell the shares. The writer uh, has the obligation they must, uh, if you exercise as a buyer, if you exercise your right, they have the obligation to buy or sell the shares when you exercise. Now, we'll focus on American style options. There are other styles out there, European and others. Um, American style options let you exercise any time before expiration. Um, European has a different treatment, and um, I'm not looking at that. So call option. So why would you be interested in the call option? So suppose, I'm just going to make sure I scroll down here and see any, uh, any uh, questions coming in. All right. <clears throat> so suppose you believe you have good reason, you know, founded in some kind of reality, that you think a stock is going to go up. So you could just go out and buy the stock for sure. But you could also buy a call option contract. So why would you do that? Why would you buy a call option contract instead of just buying the shares? Well, let's look at it. So let's look at an uh, Apple example. I've got a, a screenshot here of an Apple chart as of October 2014. Apple's trading at about 100 bucks, And let's say you have some kind of reality-based reason, your chart analysis, your fundamental analysis, it doesn't matter why, but you think, hey, I think Apple's going up to 120 bucks by the end of the year, by December. All right. Wouldn't it be cool if you could buy Apple at 100 bucks? after it went up to 120. I, I think that'd be awesome. Well, it's true, you can. Um, and look, wow, you're a genius. Apple did go up, your analysis was right. It went up to 120 bucks. And because you're a savvy options trader, you get to buy Apple at $100. How's that possible? You're able to buy Apple at 100 bucks a share in December after it's gone up to 120 because back in October you bought a call option contract with a strike price of $100. 
Remember, the strike price is the contracted price that you can buy the shares at, regardless of current price. So since the stock went up to 120, that's a really good thing. Um, of course, this isn't free. Right? You have to buy the contract. You have to pay for that right to buy shares at $100 in the future. And the cost that you pay is called a premium. So, and that contracted right doesn't last forever. The contract that you purchased, it has an expiration date. And after that date, it expires. And that's one of the biggest risks of buying options, is that they expire. So if the stock had not gone up and you didn't exercise your right, if the stock had gone down, your contract would have been um, worthless at expiration. Now you don't have to, it doesn't have to expire worthless. There's things you can do and we'll talk about that. But put option is really just the opposite. And sometimes it's hard, um, people can understand call options a little bit easier. And then put options, it's really you just hold a mirror up against it. Right? So suppose you have reason to believe a stock is going to go down. So you could just sell it share, sell the share short, assuming you're not trading in an IRA. And as it, as Jim covered in the last presentation, um, you can't take, a, you know, a short trade is by, by definition a margin trade. And you can't take margin trades in an IRA. But you can definitely buy a put option contract. So you can, you can trade short um, trades by buying a put option contract, even in an IRA um, or SCP or different uh, tax deferred account, because buying a put option contract doesn't make your head spin. It's a long position. And you can take long positions in pretty much anything you want in an IRA. So that's good to know. So why would you consider buying the put option contract instead of just shorting the shares? Well, let's look at another example. Apple again. This is July 2015. Apple's trading at 120. And you believe you have some reality-based thesis formed for that uh, Apple's going to go down to 100 bucks by the end of the summer. So wouldn't it be cool, just like the other example, wouldn't it be cool if you could sell Apple at $120 after it went down below 100 Of course it would. And wow. Your analysis was right, and Apple did go down to 100. And because you're savvy, you know what you're doing. You got a good strategy here. You get to sell Apple at at $120, and it's sitting out here at 95. That's awesome. Okay, why? Because back in July 2015, when you did your analysis, um, you bought a put option contract. You bought it with a strike price of 120. That means that's the price you get to sell the shares at. Okay. Of course, it's not free. You have to pay a premium, and just like with the call option contract, there's an expiration date. It doesn't last forever, and if if your scenario didn't play out um, by the expiration date of the contract, then it expires worthless, and if you haven't exercised it or sold the contract by the expiration date, it's worth zero. So what's the profit potential? Looking at these trades that we just walked through, so look at this app, Apple call option example. Right. The first one, the call option example, in October 2014, we had bought a call option um, with a strike price of $100. And we had a, now, we thought that by the end of the year, by December, it would, uh, it would hit our $120 price. So we, we want to buy it um, out in time a little bit, at least 30 days, 60 days out. So we buy a January contract so it doesn't expire um, before our scenario plays out. So we pay a premium for this. We pay a thousand bucks for it. And that'd be a, that'd be a realistic premium for an Apple 100 uh, strike price contract at that point in time. So say we pay a thousand bucks for it. Okay. Now if we just bought the shares in October 2014, say we were we were going to trade 100 shares, right? Every option contract um, gives you control or the right to buy 100 shares. So we'll make our example based on 100 shares. So if we had just bought 100 shares. At $100, we would have $10,000 in the market and at risk, and that capital would be tied up. Right? Now, the shares went to $120. That's a $20 share, $20 per share gain. It's a $2,000 profit. That's pretty nice, 20% gain. But if we'd bought the, uh, it should be January, uh, January 16 strike price 100, um, we pay 1000 bucks. Right? We get a, the same $2,000 gain on the 100 shares, but we only had $1,000 tied up in the trade. 
So rather than having $10,000 at risk and tied up, we had $1,000 at risk and tied up, and we made um, $1,000. Now, it was $2,000 gain, but we had to spend 1000 bucks for the premium, so we made a $1,000 profit. That's a 100% gain. So for $1,000, you're able to control and get the profit from the price move of $10,000 worth of shares. That's leverage. And a put option example, I won't walk through it, but um, it works exactly the same way, just in uh, reverse. And now, again, if, that, if that's not good enough, here's something really cool. Um, you don't have to actually uh, exercise the option contract and take possession of the share, shares. Because if you take possession of the shares, um, then you got to put the capital on the table to buy them at the strike price, and then you got to go sell them, right? You can just sell the contract, right? Because a contract that you bought in January with a strike price of 100 for a thousand bucks, with Apple sitting in December at 120 dollars, your contract now worth at least. $2,000, that's called its intrinsic value, and depending on volatility and the time left on the contract, it could be worth more, but it's worth at least $2,000, right? Because you have the right, you have the contracted right to buy 100 shares of Apple at $100 when it's sitting at $120, that's, that's valuable. So you can just sell the contract, and contracts sell just like stock shares. Um, they have a bid ask a bid and an ask price, they have market makers, and you can sell them without ever actually taking possession of the actual shares. And that's what I do. Um, I rarely actually exercise a contract. I just, you know, I do my analysis on a stock chart. If it's going up, I buy calls. If it's going down, I buy puts. And um, when the chart shows me that it's time to get out of the trade, I go sell the contracts and take my profit. And it's important, there's, there's funny nomenclature related to uh, option contracts. So. Selling can mean two different things when it, when it um, comes to options. Um, selling contracts that you own is different than selling contracts that you don't own. Selling contracts that you do not yet own is called writing, writing contracts. And that's important to understand um, because writing contracts has its own set of risks. Okay? So when you buy a contract, the terminology is called buy to open. And then when you go to sell a contract that you own, it's called sell to close. So that's that's really important to uh, be aware of. So let's talk. So we covered the power, right? The leverage that we can control large amounts of stock and get the profit from them with a small amount of money. But what about the risk? So of course, there's no free lunch on Wall Street, right? With the power of option comes risk. And for the people who write option contracts, and there's a lot of people who do it, and they have good strategies and good reasons for doing that, right? But if you write option contracts and you're obligated to deliver the share, the shares, um, most brokerage or trading platforms, when you go to place an order, when you go to write option contracts, they will say, um, the risk of this trade is unlimited. Now, how do you feel about unlimited risk? I have trouble sleeping at night if I have a trade on that has unlimited risk, personally. For buyers of option contracts. Remember, when you buy an option contract, you have the right, but not the obligation, to act on that contract. So the only risk you have is the premium that you paid for the contract. Now you can lose 100% of that premium, and there's a way to control that risk, right? Let's say, you know, this is Apple example, you bought, um, you know, this uh, January 15 strike price 100 call option, and you spend a thousand bucks on it. The absolute maximum that you can amount that you can lose is a thousand bucks. Now, how do you control the risk of that? Well, don't spend more on the premiums than you um, can afford to lose. Um, that's a really simple strategy. Now, there's some more advanced strategies for that, for sure. Okay, I'm going to look over. There's a couple questions. So, uh, uh, Majid is asking, can I buy call option gold with an expiration date the end of December? Uh, there's all kinds of option contracts, Majid, that, that trade on gold. There's the GLD ETF, there's gold mining stocks, uh, lots of stuff, and uh, most of them have option markets. And um, most of their, you know, December, uh, there is a December expiration date for most of those. Um, uh, the expiration date for most options is the third Friday of the month. 
So it would be the third Friday of December. But yeah, um, Susan's asking anything current today. Um, you know, the examples I'm showing are really to explain options. Um, we've got lots of option trades going on right now that are very current, and uh, we'll get to that in a minute. And uh, Dan's asking, does write options mean sell to open? That's correct, Dan. Sell to open is to write an option contract, right? All right, you're welcome, Susan. All right, let's keep rolling here. So we said there's no free lunch, right? So if you thought the price was going up, you know, like on Apple, and it went down and you did nothing, the contract would expire worthless and you'd use, lose your $1,000, right? But you don't have to. You don't have to let it expire worthless. You can sell your contract before it expires. Maybe you'll take a loss, but you don't have to lose the full amount of the premium. Now, I do everything I do is based on the analysis of the underlying chart. I analyze the chart. I get a, an entry price, a stop price, a target price, all laid out in advance. Then I go look for the best option contract to play with. And if the underlying chart stock hits my stop, I'm going to go sell my option contract. I'm going to sell the close, and I'm going to take a loss, but I don't have to take a 100% loss. I'm going to get out of it before it goes to zero. So for option writers, and I don't do this, I, I have, I've done spreads and all that stuff, and I've just found over time what's worked best for me is a super simple approach, right? Anything we can simplify, I'm all for. And my super simple approach is if I think the trend's going up, I buy calls, and if I think the trend is going down, I buy puts. And I've got a very specific method for picking the right contract and for analyzing the charts. But this is important to cover, right? So for option writers, there's there's two two things there. Covered means they already own the shares. If if they're um, a lot, you know, it means they own the shares. It, it can get a little complicated for the for the puts, um, naked puts. But they own the shares or they're short the shares, and they have them to deliver if you exercise your option. So that's not as risky as the next thing. Um, it can be a, you know their biggest risk is is missing profit, right? If if they sold um, option call contracts at a hundred dollar strike price and Apple goes up to one hundred twenty, they got to give you the shares at a hundred bucks. They missed out on the profit, but they did get the premium that you paid them, right? That's their biggest risk. Uh, naked means they don't have the shares. They're selling a contract to either uh, sell contracts to you at a given price or buy or buy shares from you at a given price. And they don't have them. This is the unlimited risk part, right? And if something really dramatic happens, right? Uh, say Apple, they sold you a, a call contract at 100 bucks, and say something really exciting happened with Apple, and, the, and it goes up to 200 bucks, right? They have to go out and buy stock at 200 dollars and sell it to you at 100 dollars. That is why it's called unlimited risk. Again, that keeps me up at night just a little bit, right? I want to know exactly what risk I'm exposed to. And I want it to be a level that I am okay with. That if it happens, it it's it will not set me back, right? I can continue on trading my plan, right? My my current system, I have about a 70% win rate, which means I have about a 30% lose lose rate, right? Um, the ones that lose lose very small amount of money. The ones that win win much bigger. And so the the losers don't bother me at all. But if because they're they're small, right? They're always less than two percent of my account. Sometimes less than one percent. If I was exposed to a loss of ten or twenty or thirty percent of my account, um, one loss would be um, could spoil the whole year, right? Okay. So for buyers of options, you know, the biggest risk is that the contract has a it has a deadline, an expiration date. If it doesn't go the direction you thought it would, your contract will be worthless. It will expire zero unless you get out first, right? The risk to the buyer of options only extends to the premium that you pay. You can lose 100% of the premium that you paid, but nothing beyond that. If you think back to the writer of naked calls, right? How much can they lose? Well, I don't know. Depends on how, how 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 much the stock moves, right? How much can the buyer lose? It's well contained. It's it's exactly the amount that they paid for the premium. That's the max they can lose. I like the way being a buyer of options that my risk is absolutely well defined and and uh, limited. And again, you don't have to let your contract expire worthless. You can sell it beforehand. Again, I do that based on the realities of what's happening on the chart. It may take a small loss, but you don't have to lose the full premium. So how to control risk. One obvious step here, and I know, I know there's a lot of people that write, write contracts, and there's a good reason for doing it, and they have their methods, and some are good, some are bad. But 
a way to control risk is to never write contracts. That's a, a an easy step, right? And you'll never have to um, have those words pop up on your order screen, unlimited risk. <laughs> and and that's what I do. Now there are multi-leg option strategies, you know, spreads and condors and butterflies and all this stuff, right? They can get pretty complex and hard to understand. Um, I've I've traded those before. I know there's a lot of people who do. There's there's good approaches to using those. But I've I've found for me to be consistently profitable. I just use a very simple method, right? So one obvious step: is never write, write options. Um, again, I follow very simple. I only buy calls, buy puts. I generally use two percent, so I only spend two percent of my trading account. So if a hundred thousand dollar account, the most I would spend on a premium would be um, two thousand dollars. If the contracts are a thousand bucks each. I'll buy two of them for 2000 bucks. Now, there is an advanced method where I can go spend a lot more on the premium, but I've got to be able to project what the premium is going to be at my stop price and make sure I can get out of that contract. So there's an advanced way to get more capital, more, more contracts in play. But the simple way is just to only spend 2% um, of my account on the premium. And then if the trade fails completely, the most I'm going to lose is 2%. And that's a tolerable loss. Right? In most cases, I can get out. Um, but add less. <clears throat> so options are derivatives, which means they derive their value from something else. In the case of stock options or ETF options, they're, they're really the same. The value is derived from the underlying asset, the stock. So I think it's critical that all of your analysis take place on the chart before you start looking at options. So the primary analysis on the chart before I go into an option trade, I want to know the entry price, a stop price, a target price, and a time to target because that tells me um, what expiration date. I want to be 30 to 60 days out from I think the thing's going to hit the price target. Um, so the, at the end of an option contract, there's something called rapid time decay um, where the price, the, the, the extrinsic volatility and time-based value of the contract and that begins to decay rapidly and lose value. So I don't want to be in that zone. Okay. After you figure that out um, you, on your chart, you got an entry price, a stop price, a target price, time frame. Then you go look at an option chain and you figure out which uh, which contract to buy. So here's a quick snapshot of an option chain. This is from TradeStation. It's a platform I use. Very similar on other platforms. You know, even if you don't use a professional trading platform, if you're with Schwab or something like that, they have option chains. Very similar. So they're, they're grouped by expiration date. And like on this case, I click this little plus sign. You know, I figured out my time to target, my time to my price target, and I want to be 30 to 60 days out. So I go, oh, in this case, I want to look at the January options. So I click that little plus sign, and it expands. And, and here's all the different strike price contracts now available. And uh, for the calls, you can see there's a shading change here. These are what's called in the money, and these are what is called out of the money. And out of the money means that the strike price of the contract is above the current price. So the price of the stock has not gone to or above the uh, strike price, and these, the price is above it, which means they're in the money, right? They're actually worth money now. And so there's lots of things you can look at. There's all kinds of Greek values, you know, theta, gamma, delta, um, the bid ask. Again, these sell just like stocks. It's, it's an auction, right? The bid and ask, right? You look at the open interest, the volume, all kinds of things, and you can choose the best uh, option contract to make your trade with. Um, again, I keep it really simple. I look for, you know, if, it, if I think the thing's going up, I look at call contracts, and then I go. Um, I, w I only want to trade one in the money. I want the highest delta possible. Delta is the amount that the price of the contract is going to change proportional to an increase in the $1 change in stock and the price of the stock. So that's an option chain, and you just, you know, all the details there to go take a look and figure out the best contract to trade with. So here's some suggested next steps. You know, what can you do next if you're really interested in this? Um, you know, if you feel comfortable analyzing stock charts and choosing option contracts, give it a try. Again, you know, just buying calls, just buying puts 
is you know your risk is limited to the premium you paid. Consider testing it out, just placing orders and you know try it out in sim mode. You know if you got a, a trading platform like TradeStation, you can just switch to sim mode and you can buy and sell to your heart's content and see how it works and really just get familiar with it. Uh, I know Thinkorswim has a, uh, a uh, you know paper trading capability. Uh, uh, Charles Schwab owns Option Express. They also have a paper trading capability. So if you haven't done it before and you're and you're just not sure, you know, try it out in sim first, paper trade that first. Another thing you can do is subscribe to my stock picking service. So I, I just include option contract details on my stock picks. We'll look at that in a minute. And if you want to learn more, I've got a detailed stock option course where I walk through in much greater detail um, about options and how to how to pick the correct option, what all the Greeks mean, how to manage trades, advanced strategies for managing risk. So I've got a, a course here I'll show you. So my, my stock pick subscription, uh, I, I publish one to two stock picks a week. These are ones I'm buying with my own money, my own account. These are the absolute best of the best. Um, I give updates on the trade, so I'm with you know I'm with you the whole way because I'm trading this thing, and I give you updates on you know narrative on how it's playing out, if we're moving our stop, if we're going to take a little profit, uh, do what we call scale out uh, as the thing's playing out. Uh, again, I give the details on the option contract, and you know, here's my track record uh, over the last uh, three years and into this year. So we're we're beating the indexes. You know, I, I never make claims that you're going to be a you know take a thousand dollars and turn it into ten million. But we're making really, really solid profit very consistently, and you can see over the years, um, good. This year, uh, you know, we, we went short early in the year on some some uh, big cap stocks, and then we got in when gold exploded. So we've closed 10 trades this year, and we got 11.7%. We got a bunch of open trades when we close. It's going to about double that. So we're already at about 20% for the year. Um, each stock pick has these details. You know, in this case, it was Apple. It was a sell. Give you the sell price range. You know, sell between these levels. Here's the stop loss. Here's the target, and a little calculator to use to manage risk control. And then I give the contract specs. You know, hey, we're going to use the April 2016 put, strike 100, not pay more than 8.25 for the contract. Um, so I give the details of what I'm trading, and and you can follow along with that. And it's working pretty well. Um, and you can try that. You can try that for 10 days for seven bucks. And if you you know give it a try, if it's not for you, I'll give you 100%. I'll give you your seven but seven dollars back, no questions asked, no hard feelings. After the seven days, I got a discount. The list price for this is 127. It's a great value, but I'll give you a 23% discount uh, to 297 dollars a month. And you can cancel at any time, of course, after the 10 10 days. I got I made a little tiny URL so it's easy to see here, but I'll also paste this in the chat area real quick. So if you're interested in that, uh, by all means, uh, give it a shot. We'd love to have you um, subscribe and be part of that. We're, we're having fun and we're, we're doing great this year. So that's the, uh, the stock picks. The next thing is I've got a stock options course, as I mentioned. And uh, uh, this course teaches you my stock options trading plan. It's got four hours of teaching videos. I've got uh, reading material. There's six modules it's organized into. Um, there's worksheets for each module. There's email support if you have any questions. It includes six weeks of weekly webinars live. You can attend and ask all the questions you want. I'll do teaching. If you can't attend, I record those. You can watch it. And I include a stock option pick every week. So as part of the course, you get the teaching videos, the reading material, worksheets. I'll be there to support you. You have access to all this material for life. And six weeks of webinars, you can come out, do that, and you, you you learn how to choose the right what the right contract, what the Greeks mean, how to use them, how to place and manage orders, advanced uh, risk management strategies, and a lot more. And next class, um, the six week series of webinars, it begins next Tuesday. The list price for this four ninety seven. Webinar attendees, you can get in for three seventy nine, twenty five percent discount, and it comes with a money back guarantee. Not too many classes have a money back guarantee. The way that works is you pay, you get in, you get access to the first module, the first webinar, and um, then you decide. And if you want to proceed to the second module and through the sixth module, then there's no more refund. But you get to try the first module, the first week for free. And if you download this presentation, um, I just wrapped up a lot, another class, and 
um, everybody filled out a survey and you get to see their survey uh, results here. I'm posting it because I was, I was super pleased. The, the people loved the course. So uh, if you're interested in the options course, I am posting a link now. And there we go. And that was my last slide. So Travis, um, am I okay on time? I see a few questions coming in. Um, how are we doing? You're good on time right now. You've got uh, about uh, 11 minutes, 10 minutes left. Okay. Well, good. I'm scanning for questions here. Dan asked, I think I answered your question, Dan, about um, uh, do I recommend buying in or out of the money. You know, I like buying in the money. And, and the reason is it has a higher delta, and, and that means that if I'm right and the stock moves in the direction I projected, the price of the contract is going to go up proportionately more. Now, the trade-off is out-of-the-money contracts have lower premiums and you pay less money. But um, I'd rather pay more for the premium because I'm only going to I'm going to spend the same amount, right? For a hundred thousand dollar account, I'm going to spend two thousand dollars, regardless of the price. It's just how many contracts am I buying? So I'd rather have my two thousand dollars go up faster when the stock goes up or go up faster when the stock goes down. Hope that makes sense. Brandon's asking, if you purchase a call option and it goes below your strike price and the option's about to expire, when do you recommend exercising the option and purchasing the shares? So here's, there's only one scenario, Brandon, where I exercise and buy the shares. Um, if, it, if, the, if it goes below my price, right? it generally would hit my stop on my chart and I would go sell the contract for a small loss and be done with the trade. The only scenario where I would go exercise the contract and take possession of the shares is when, you know, say that Apple example that, you know, I said, hey, I think Apple's going to 100 and it actually, then that trend continued and it just kept going up and up and up, right? And there's clear signs, technical signs on a chart when a trend is going to end. So if the trend has not ended and my expiration date is getting close, if I'm getting into that 30-day window where price decays, then I will exercise the option, take possession of the shares, because I think the trend is continuing and there's more profit to be made. Okay? Typically, I'm, I'm out of the trade. The trend has ended before the expiration date because I've projected that and I'm, and I'm pretty accurate at that. So I hope that, hope that answer makes sense, Brandon. <laughs> 